from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 31st, 2016. Three Israeli soldiers were wounded this afternoon, one of them seriously, in a terror attack in the West Bank. The three were shot at at a checkpoint near the Jewish settlement of Beit El, reportedly by a Palestinian police officer. According to the IDF, the Palestinian man approached the focus checkpoint and opened fire on the troops stationed there with an AK-47 assault rifle. He was named by the official news outlet of the Palestinian Authority as Muhammad Turkman, who reportedly served in a special forces unit of the Palestinian police. The IDF said the Israeli forces responded to the attack with return fire at the terrorist, killing him. The seriously injured Israeli soldier who was hit by live fire was taken to Hadassah Hospital, Mount Scopus, in Jerusalem. The other two soldiers who were hit by shrapnel and were lightly to moderately wounded were taken to Hadassah Hospital at Ein Kerem. Earlier today, shots were fired at IDF forces in the northern Golan Heights. No injuries were reported there. The IDF said the shots were fired at Israeli soldiers who were conducting, quote, routine activity near Israel's border with Syria. It was unclear exactly where the gunfire emanated from, but it appeared it had come from the Syrian side of the border. The IDF was investigating. Yesterday, three Israeli border police officers were lightly injured in the West Bank in what appears to have been a deliberate car ramming attack. The incident took place near Beit Umar, north of Hebron, where the three were hit by a vehicle driven by a 23-year-old Palestinian who was identified as Khalid Ahmad Elan. Elan was shot dead by Israeli troops. The three wounded soldiers were taken to Sharei Tzedek Medical Center in Jerusalem with light wounds to their lower extremities. And also yesterday, in the same area of the West Bank, a five-year-old Israeli boy was hurt when a group of Palestinians threw rocks at cars driving along the highway. The rocks hit two cars, one of which the boy was traveling in. It shattered one of the windows, lightly injuring the boy, and he was taken to Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem for treatment. And on Saturday, an Israeli vehicle was shot at in the southern West Bank. No injuries or damage was reported there. On Friday night, a Palestinian man tried to run over IDF forces with his vehicle at a checkpoint near the Jewish settlement of Ofra in the central West Bank. Troops there shot at the vehicle, causing it to stop. The suspect then got out of his car and holding a knife charged at the soldiers who then opened fire and seriously injured the man who was taken for treatment to Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu opened the winter session of the Knesset today, where he once again thanked the United States for its recent defense package to Israel. The Prime Minister said, I would like to express our appreciation for the U.S. aid package we received. He said it does not mean that occasional disagreements will not arise between us, but I hope they will be rare. Netanyahu said Obama declared in 2011 that peace will not be achieved by the U.N. resolutions but through direct negotiations. I believe he will stay true to this and not abandon Israel. And staying with the Prime Minister, Netanyahu announced yesterday in his cabinet meeting that he will visit four countries in the next few months, three of which have never been visited by a sitting Israeli Prime Minister. Netanyahu will travel to Australia, Singapore and Kazakhstan and also visit Azerbaijan, where he briefly visited back in 1997. Netanyahu also said that Israeli President Reuven Rivlin will visit India in two weeks. Well, following a request from Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, kosher food will now be available in U.N. cafeterias. Ynet reports that Israel's ambassador, Dani Danon, had written a letter to U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, noting that many U.N. employees and diplomats from around the world keep kosher. Danon wrote, we believe that all citizens of the world should feel welcome in the U.N.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, October the 31st at 7 o'clock, The Wisdom of Dr. Ruth Westheimer. At 7.30, Alejandro Mayorkas talks about immigration with the forwards Nathan Gutman. At 8, an interfaith discussion of the ethical and spiritual facets to voting with Burton Vizotsky of JTS, Elena Procario Foley of Iona College, Jerusha Lamptey of CUNY, and Michael Peppard of Fordham in a program of the American Jewish Committee of Westchester Fairfield and Iona College. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with executive director of the JCC Manhattan and the former president of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical Association, Joe Levitt, who talks about Jewish education for young people today on the Chaim. At 10, Alan Dershowitz and Dennis Ross talk about the U.S.-Israel relationship with Ethan Bronner of Bloomberg News. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, Chancellor of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, Arnold Eisen, talks about the BDS movement on college campuses on tonight's In the News with Mark Golub. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 31st, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.